Hey, welcome in. Uh, this is our podcast. It's it's the Big Head Pod, and it's Suds with Luds, uh, and yet. Really, that's not appropriate. So, because you know, how do you marry? Right now. How do you marry those? So here it is. This is playmakers. Well, the guy with the big head is drinking suds of he, blood. Well, yeah. not really. And has got a big head. Yeah. So I, your, your nugget doesn't look very self, small. Self-proclaimed. So here's here's what it is. This is playmakers, <laughs> not yet famous roundtable. Yes, because when we do a hey, these are going to get famous. You're going to say is it playmakers? Is we're actually on our no, but we'll be. This is a rectangular table in Terminal C at DFW Airport. Yes, that's okay. So we call it a square table, rectangular table. Let's call it a round table. It almost looks like a uh, one of the sand shuffleboard tables. That's there we. Oh, we should play shuffleboard. Kind of reminds me of more of a beer pong table. It's beer pong too. We can set up some cups and. We could. Ping we could pong. Do. Oh, look at it. And here comes snacks. Here Jason, comes bring it on in. Wow. This is. We are at Dirk Nowitzki's restaurant at DFW Airport. So I mean, we're getting Airport. Swedish food here? Look oh. at Whoa. this. We have flatbread pizzas. We have Man. these beautiful pretzel bites. And what else? Roller Town Big German. This is Dirk's beer, and it is fantastic. And you... Brewed by himself. Him he, yeah, he does. Himself you should see him out there <laughs> stirring. You, know. you need to come to this restaurant. It's at gate C37 at DFW Airport, and this place is fantastic. And uh, we are here to talk about generations, really. And oh, frankly, oh, we we're going to pull the audience about generations here. That's an upcoming podcast. We'll be, yeah, yeah. We will be, the, yes. I mean, this Gen X stuff and all that. Oh. You need to see no, this. No, the, the best one we're going to talk about is the self-proclaimed alpha one. You like the alphas? The alphas. Yeah. The 12 year olds are calling yeah. themselves alphas. Yes, we've been Love it. relegated to the yeah. beta role as parents. We're babies, as right? We're baby boomers. Boomers. Yeah. We're boomers. Yeah. Yeah. No, apparently I, I'm a gen. What am, Spencer, what am I? A gen, he's a gen Z. Isn't gen Z or gen no, 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 he's a millennial. A millennial. Are you he's kidding me? You're a millennial. Yeah. Not 78. No, you're, you're, you're not a millennial. You're the one before that. Which is what? Gen Y, I think. Oh, you're, you're a Y. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a Y chromosome, so take that. Uh, we'll have other guests stop by in the course of the program. Craig Maybe. Lovewood, Kevin Mench, John Radigan, and uh, we're just here hanging out. We're just grabbing people as they walk by, yes, right? Trying to, yeah, we're they, hoping somebody like famous we, comes if by. If we see anybody famous, I mean, there's a big picture of Dirk right there. I wish that could talk. Yeah. But if we see anybody famous, we'll grab them. We'll throw them on the podcast, but it's the Playmakers Not Yet Famous Roundtable. And that's what we're doing. We're going to just talk. Maybe some sports. I don't know. We might. What are sports? I mean, this is, we're in an airport. I mean, we want to see people. This is beautiful. Brand, look at the, all this, the renovations. It's actually bright in here. It doesn't look like a uh, owner of this insane, thing? insanity yeah. hospital, yeah. insane asylum and stuff, everything. He loves the airport. I, I do. Hey, I like the people watch. You don't like people, Luds. Just say it. Correct. Okay. I, so, I, Rads I, and I, when I'm in, I, I do I, like, I people. love the people watch, and I'm in this airport quite a bit with our U18 team. We fly in and out of here all the time. Um, so I like to get in. I like to sit in a corner and, and watch. My favorite airport, honestly, is the people or who people watch, is O'Hare. Really? It, oh my yeah. gosh! It, you get everything. Is that the Gen Zers and Boomers and Alphas all come <laughs> flying through? O'Hare through is there. the biggest, right? But I think DFW is the most busiest, busiest right. airport, correct? Okay. Yes. Did you just okay. say the most busiest? I think he did. No, I, I didn't say I most think busiest. You it's that. O'Hare said, is the biggest. He said most, and I said busiest. Okay, so, so he didn't. It's screw a combo it up grammatically. Yeah, he's Sorry. not his. Fault. Sorry, we're. We're, we're enjoying ourselves today, yeah. right? Just having fun. Yes, exactly. Beer. And, and then she doesn't like. By the way, it's eight a.m. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're recording this eight fifteen a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These are breakfast Menchie. tacos. We love it. Men, she doesn't like beer, so he drinks whiskey. So this could get. You don't have any idea where this could go. Yes. If right? you're flying out today, if you're Terminal A, take, hey, take the tram and. Are come you on flying out today? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> flying right back to my house when we're done. <laughs> yeah. Hope we're not flying. Yeah. 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 We're yeah. driving. Uh, so where do we start? Um, it's dirt place that's pretty cool i mean again that big picture of him seven footer i want to tell you something about yeah i do mr I, dirt i do i want to hear this i am not uh, a uh, big basketball i don't player. know a lot yeah, about basketball I know you but I, you know i watch games here and there he has he not won or achieved every award that a basketball player can come up with is there anything he hasn't achieved as a basketball player I, from a trophy to yeah and you a know, banner to, a, yeah. to to the statue MVP MVPs All Star team MVP, everything All Star MVP Is there anything left? Yeah, I don't I don't think there's anything 
that you, he, you do this yeah, for a living, fame. shouldn't you know this? Yeah, Hall of Fame, right? Well, he's there. Yeah, Hall of Fame. So yeah, that's the ultimate and first ballot, by the way. Okay, so yeah. here here's a question I asked Mole, and if Dirk just happens to walk by, which, yeah, we'll grab him. Yeah, yeah, I would ask him, and here's a question. I'd, and if I'm not here, you guys ask him. I may have to get escorted out. That, <laughs> and I asked the same question of Chris Chalios and Mike Madonna. When it comes to having your jerseys retired, the Hall of Fame, the NBA championship, all those things, is there one more important than another? The most. Yeah. Well, I, I you know, I got a different answer from both of those Did guys. Okay. And and from Chelios, it was like he wanted to see his jersey hanging in Chicago Did Stadium. Really? Yeah. Which he just accomplished yeah. a month ago. Yep. But that was more for him and that was about his family. My kids will be able to walk in someday. Wait a second. Oh, Holy. we told you some Hall of Famers might walk by. Wow. Look at this. Look, where are you Look going? At. A great Nancy Lieberman. Hall of Famer walks into this restaurant. You never know who might show up at Dirk's restaurant. We've Look at that. Everybody, how Hi. are you? Baby, how are you? Nance. Hi. Long hug. We got food. What's your name? John Radigan. You can come right over here and sit down and hug me because we got a spot for you. We've got snacks. How are you? Awesome Good to see you wait. again. No, do your thing. No, no, no. We're no, waiting on you, honey. Yeah, we're talking. We're so talking. Sit down. And you're talking. Rad, slide down. I'm sorry. Rad, we gotta, oh. Yeah, let me move. If we. <clears throat> this is how it happens. You a chance yeah. to try the flatbread. It's oh, pretty that's good. perfect. Yeah, I gotta have. I know, but right now I got some bite kind of right here. We're bringing like Nancy in. in. Hi. How are you? I'm so happy. Guess who won this seating chart? Well, no kidding. <laughs> what seating chart? Oh yeah, yeah. there oh, you go. Oh my goodness. goodness. Uh, wow. He made sure. Let's he talk does. about the first thing that comes up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey. I'm in topic. He said it. <laughs> we knew he would. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. Uh huh. Would you like we a, knew a beer or something, Nancy? So we have Dirk's beer. We got oh, I mean, just well, came out. These are what, what kind of flatbread pizzas? I will try a Dirk's beer. I, yes, and I'm not a beer yes. drinker. Good, because I'm fixing to. What's man. over there? That food. That's pizza. That is flatbread a pizza. Flatbread pizza. Flatbread pizza. Jason, what is it? We have a pepperoni. What's the other one? Jamaican jerk. <laughs> Jamaican jerk, Nancy. On that one. Are you mic'd up? Wait, yet? you call me a jerk? <laughs> what the hell? Are you a jerk? So can I tell you what happened? Yes. Tell us. We'd love to hear. I was on the phone walking in here. I'm so embarrassed. Am I mic'd? I was walking in with Del Harris. I was talking to him, and we're just chit-chatting. And I'm like getting ready to walk in, and I I unzip my purse to get my. I carry a gun. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. And I went, Dell. You just said this. You just said Del, this. Dell. Man, she. I got to go to my car. He goes, what's wrong? I go, before I get arrested, um, would you vouch for me? He goes, what, what's going on? I go, I have a gun in my purse. I go, I got to go to the car. <laughs> was this, like, just so now. You didn't get through security. I mean, you didn't go She didn't get that. too secure. No, oh. but just now, yeah. And I went back. And where my car was parked, and put the gun in there, and walked back, and like, okay, this is good. So TSA it's, didn't wonder why you turned and yeah. tucked tail and ran real fast. I did. I was just waiting for um, what, what's her name? Me. She's so sweet. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, Tess. Tess. I Tess escorted me in too. Yeah. So We've, we never said athletes are smart. No, no. We've never, especially well, ones that are in the Hall of Fame. I mean, apparently, right. when you get in the Hall of Fame, they don't you're need just to be the brain just take care of You get two guns. It, it, oh, you get, oh, yeah. okay. It reminds gotcha. me of the of the uh, Barry Switzer thing, where he didn't remember, oh. and the bag came through uh, security. He was coming to his Austin wife was with for him? training camp. He came through. The bag comes through security, and he gets pulled over. And there, and we're all in Austin. going, where the hell, is Switzer? He's not a practice. What's going on? And the the famous soundbite from Switzer is. I forgot to take my pistol out of my backpack. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So Switzer, they got they caught him. At least they didn't catch you, Nancy. Right after Switzer. <coughs> huh? Switzer got off. I went back to the yeah. You were in the. You were in the. You were key. there. Went to Maverick game. Told my guy, take it out of my bag. I'm flying tomorrow. Gives it to the guy who's driving. The guy puts it back in the bag. I go through security. Did you get handcuffed? Nancy, it was a felony. I it's was a felony. Is that degree. why you're this is why, this is why he was on a no-fly list trying expunged. to get through here. Hey, expunged, $22,000. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Do you not have a flight that takes off anytime? <laughs> <laughs> you're just a random... you got a flight to catch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we want oh, to talk to Nancy. Wait, wait, baseball man. Foster Brooks. Baseball um, man. <laughs> baseball man. He's he's big head. That's what you know. Kicks Brooks. We would play at Toby Keith's golf tournament, and we had not met, and he was late getting in the car. 
and they go, yeah, well, it's, it's a country guy. And I looked, uh, and he told me Kix Brooks, and I'm like, what? His name is Kix? Okay. He gets in the car and I go, country guy, you're, you're late. We're supposed to play golf. He goes, did you just call me country guy? I said, yeah, I mean, you're Brooks and Dunn. And you're done with me because you're late. <laughs> he starts let We became great friends. That's great, yeah. And we played nine, uh, 18 good, holes yeah. together. Yeah. They came out to NBA Summer League to see me oh, play when they, they yeah. were doing Reba's show. Get this freaking bug. I get you some chopsticks Talk about instead. You sure right. you're, uh, we're, sitting, we're sitting here with a name dropper. I, <laughs> so I have, a, I have a question. Yes. So who is the most famous... Athlete, person in general, in your opinion, that you've met I know this. Got. I know where this is going, by you the way. You know where Nancy. it is. <laughs> oh, <really>? I do. <laughs> what it's uh, Muhammad, Ali. Muhammad Ali. Oh, really? Muhammad Ali. She's like buddies with took Layla. Me and... under his wing. I was 20. I was in college. Just going last into year, my senior right? year. Yeah, yeah. I'm last. You. You, don't you love Can you this get guy? divorced? Because <laughs> you're next on my list. But um, so we met in New York. A lot's happening. I, yeah, I'm. Okay, he never let me go. He just took my question and threw it under the bus. <laughs> yeah. 37 years of Muhammad Ali, and in the last 10 or 12, Thank I you, would Jason. call and his wife, and Lonnie would say, baby, he's been waiting for you all day. And I'd come in the house in Phoenix, and I'm like, hey, Muhammad, and how are you? Are you doing okay? And I go, you know, I've come out of retirement more than you. And he's like, you can say it. He, oh. You know, because he really didn't talk. He couldn't and, yeah. talk much, yeah. But he'd be like, He'd be I'm ready. Like, are you are you angry that I came out of retirement more than you? More success, more fans, oh. more. And Lonnie's like, really? I'm like, okay, Nancy I'll Lieberman stop. is rubbing it into Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. And I would just she's scoreboarding. I would put his bib on, and I would feed him like freezer pops, and I'd wipe his mouth. That's the I, same thing we do with Mensch with before you got. Here. <laughs> I thought you were going to say me. No, when you pointed at me. Because he, he calls me up. grandpa, for God's sake. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Rats, I didn't mean to spit on you. Oh, my oh, gosh. You had a personal grandpa over here. Every event <laughs> towards the end of his life, Lonnie would call me and go, honey. And I'd go, yes. She'd say, Muhammad has to go to New York to do this event. Would you MC it? And I went, yes. She goes, I didn't tell you the date. I go, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I would fly to wherever they wanted me to. And um, is there anything, one specific thing, you would take out of spending all that time with him? Yeah, there's two people in life. There's givers and there's takers. And he taught me at 20 to respect everybody and to fear nobody. I'm not afraid to come on your podcast. I'm not afraid to coach men. I'm not afraid to play against men. I'm not afraid to be great. I'm not afraid to be TJ's mommy. He taught me, I respect everybody, but he just gave me that <coughs> resilience. And he was like, like I didn't have a father. And, um, you know, um, he was like my dad, my friend, my hero, and he never let me go. I had him for 37 years. And the best part is at his funeral, Billy Crystal spoke, you know, and all the, the President Clinton. So I slide into my seat in Louisville. Yeah, I said name dropper. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, Billy Crystal lived in her neighborhood, for God's sake. Well, he's in New York. Menchie, yeah. why are you and I even here? I, yeah. No, I was no, trying to make sure good, you were. Because I'm, I'm older that, than all of you. Awesome. Right, hey, Lutz, remember, remember the, the pretty girls always hang with the ugly girls to make, every, make them even prettier. So that's why we're here. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Yeah. Look, I'm 65. I'm older than all of you. And I've tried to take it off my license after I put the gun back. <laughs> but, long story. I go to the Yum Yum Center in Louisville. I fly in. I do the whole, you know, the, what is it, a procession by his, his old house, mm -hmm. the, everything in Louisville. And then I slide into my row, and the guy goes, Hi, I am King Abdullah from, and I go, Hi. I go, I'm a king too. Yeah. And he <laughs> I goes, play basketball. And he goes, How can you be a king? You're and, a queen. and no, Billy Crystal was there and he's like, I can't believe you're doing this. I'm a Sacramento king. I'm their assistant <laughs> coach. Oh, 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 and he just looks at me and goes, What? And he and I look at Billy and he goes, Don't go there. 
Yeah. Yeah, okay. Were you with the kings when Muhammad died? Yeah. Were you really? Yeah. Then I go, yeah, I'm a king. You cannot be a king. <laughs> no, I'm a king. Trust me, I'm a king. <laughs> yeah, you got to throw something Second like that of the guy with the language. Nancy and her, and her wittiness, which, which brings me to a, to a good topic you're talking about right now, Nancy, as far as you said, talking about playing with men, you're not afraid of anything. Right. What's the big story now? Like women's college basketball right now. Yes, of course. What's the big story right Caitlin now? Caitlin Clark. Final exactly. four. Yeah. Ice Cube offering her $5 million to play is the big story. In the 3v3 league? Three yeah. On three, three on three, offered her $5 million base salary to play eight games. And you know, she is coaches. Is from Iowa? She coaches. L- yes. Ludge doesn't get out much. And no, no, no. I know that she's up. setting yeah. all the records. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. she coaches one of the big three teams. So yes. Yeah. I coach power. <clears throat> it was a little tricky because Caitlin and I are good friends. She's, she's going to win my point guard of the year award at the Final Four for the third time. But since her freshman year, Coach Bluter has been so super nice to allow me to Zoom with the team, to be a, a friend of the Iowa program. So she and I have become good friends. As a matter of fact, I was there Monday, her last game in Iowa. And after the game, and they let me come in the locker room. I still fangirl. I feel like fangirl around you guys because mm-hmm. I just love sports and what great people have done. And uh, we're in the locker room, and she gave me her game-worn jersey, and she autographed it, and it smelled. <laughs> and the other day, I watched the game two nights ago, and I wore it, and I'm like... And you smelled? What? Yeah. In my house, I wore the Caitlin Clark autographed jersey, and I'm like... <laughs> okay. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, but I were wore you her by t- yourself in your house, and you have no, company? no. I had people what? over there, and yes. but I also <laughs> had, wonder why you're wearing the jersey. Yeah, I just but I had it. aerosol, like you know, for breeze. Yeah. For breeze. And yeah. now she's sitting there in her sports bra, right? And uh, people are like, "Well, yeah. Yeah. damn it, well, this would be a good damn party, maybe." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, who offered her the five million dollars? The big Ice three. Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah, My he boss. owns the big three. The big three. The league. Ludd doesn't get out much. You need to explain it to him, Nancy. What? The big three. Explain it. Go ahead, Nancy. The big three is... Um, three on three? It's three on three. <laughs> Ice Cube yeah. beat everybody to it seven years ago. He beat the Olympics. He beat the NBA. He beat college. He beat everybody to it. So this is his story. He wasn't there the night, the last game where Kobe scored 60. He was doing a concert somewhere. He goes back to his house and he's moping around for months. And Miss Kim, his wife, goes, O'Shea, that's his real name. Yeah. O'Shea, stop. You can't do this. Go do something about it. So he calls his, um, he's, he's a great Laker and uh, Oakland Raiders fan. And so are now Vegas Raiders. And they start talking about, let's start a three on three league. So when guys retire, they have a stepping stone so the coach is in the big three. Dr. J, George Gervin, Clyde Drexler, Rick Mahorn, Rick Berry, Michael Cooper, uh, Gary Payton, Lisa Leslie, Nancy Lieberman, all Hall of Fame coaches. It's amazing. And we play in NBA arenas. It's 10 weeks if you go through the playoffs from June to September 1. We're getting 14, 15,000 people a night. Our ratings are higher. We outrate in the summer golf, the WNBA, NBA Summer League, uh, soccer, um, and Major League Baseball. Because you're on CBS, right? CBS. CBS, yeah. Because it's the pace of the game, there's a lot of energy. It seems more intimate too. The way it's the way the court's set up. It's you know NBA. You're there's you're if you're on one end of the court, you're you know 100 feet away. This it's a half court, right? So there everybody's right there. So you have that, which brings I would think bring more people in because of oh, I got a chance to actually right. What what's everybody want to do with their phone? Taking selfies and everything else. Somebody runs by. Yeah. You get more chance. And I think that's probably helps. Uh, contributes. But celebs to that. are there like Jason Kidd, um, LeBron James. Uh, 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 LL Cool J, Snoop Dogg, all, all these, you know, Kanye West. A lot of celebrities come and hang out. Ludge, you're one of them, too. You're going to be a celebrity. Well, it's, it's like the rap league. league. I mean, well. like it's a lot of rap stars, right? Uh, well, the but players are friends. not. The yeah. friends are. Yeah. But the players so are. So that community is kind of supporting it. But if, if you go into the AAC where we've played for five, six years, and there's 15,000 people there, 
white people, black people, brown people, Asian people, Muslim people, <coughs> Jews, Christians. Rads has been there. You came on my birthday. I was there on her birthday, and and my daughter. You know, my, I, who knows? My kids were big um, Ice Cube fans. And so I go there, my kids are like, oh my God, that's Ice Cube. And I go, well, I, we can probably get them over here. My kids are getting pictures with Ice Cube, yeah. you know? It's just amazing. Look at uh, Eddie. That's Eddie. <laughs> Eddie, not her, huh? Wait. You never know. Eddie, Eddie, come in here. here. Eddie, Eddie, come on, Eddie. Come on, Eddie. Come Eddie. Eddie. Everybody Eddie. just got oh, better looking. You want to sit over there? Yeah, yeah no kidding. Eddie, Hello. look at you. How are you guys? We're doing well. How are you? I think he's gotten shorter yeah, since we are. Last time we've seen him. No, we got, a, we got a mic for you, Eddie. For you want to be in the big three? We'll give you the five million that we gave to Three of us Caitlin. are going to be on each we'll other's laps here in a minute. I, that's fine. Really I got Dirk here. Eddie, you like a Dirk beer? How you doing, Dirk? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to you. The big German. Eddie Nahara. On a Monday. On a Monday. This might as well. This is a good crew. Yeah. When you think about it, the roller towns. I think we'll keep with it. How many players? Players are on each team. Okay. I'm five. Yeah. Five players. So you but think it's the not, three, four But think about it's ten It's not ten Grandpa's people. old timers day at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. These guys aren't 60. They're 39, 40, 42. But think about it. Ten players to draw 15,000 people. Yeah. Right? You've been to the big three, right? So you look I good think, at this I color. think that um, the NBA has a problem there. They're going to have to buy that league out. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to start losing some... Um, some fans, which is fine. I mean, there's plenty to go around. Sure. Uh, but because of the ex NBA players coming in, and now, like, younger guys, uh, instead of going overseas to play, they're, they're staying here. And I, I don't blame them. I mean, you stay, you stay close to home. And yeah, but then, but look at what now the NBA is trying to compete with. Isn't, isn't the Saudis, aren't they trying to create a league as well now? So there's like so much speculation, and I think that's the next money for the NBA. I really am, believe. Am I miss? I don't know if I'm wrong. But this like did I hear that, that James yeah. Harden got offered something like nine hundred million dollars to. I mean, I didn't hear that. I who? Harden to go play in, yeah. in Saudi Arabia. In oh, he would have taken it. No, but I don't, I, I don't oh, know if I read. Oh, that. I, don't, I, don't I haven't know. heard but that. Hearing, but, but I mean, they've got baseball, right? They've got a soccer league. They've got they got the golf. They've I mean, got the golf, golf thing is the one. So why wouldn't basketball be be the next thing? I mean, it seems like. I think they're going to become owners eventually. Yeah. Because there's no way the uh, the franchises, the values, they're at the top. So there's no way, and they already incorporate the new CBA or the new TV deal into the pricing. That's what yep. Mark sold for really. But do you think yeah, ownership's going to allow that, right? Doesn't ownership have to vote on new buyers? Do you know who the owners are? Yeah. Do you think they like money? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. True. <laughs> they do. Very so, true. Hey, quickly, Eddie Nahara, who's just joined us. We got Eddie, Nancy Lieberman, a Hall of Famer, one of the greatest women's basketball players ever. Two Lieberman. scrubs. Kevin <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> and Eddie, Eddie is the first ever Mexican-born person to play in the NBA. To, uh, to be drafted. To be drafted. There was one, one, there was one Mexican player that uh, made it, uh, Horacio Llamas. Okay. Great friend of mine. But he, um, you know, he he stuck around for a couple of years. He didn't play much, but I was the first one drafted in there. And had a great career with the Mavericks and other teams. But somebody to look up Denver. to, right? Growing up, what? to look what? up to as far as being a Mexican-born player to aspire. Yeah. Did you did you emulate him, or did you know even know of him? I actually. You talking about the other Mexican player? Yes. I learned what not to do if I wanted, ah. wanted to be in the NBA. <laughs> See, that's me. That's, that's hey, lots. Now, now, now I can drink a beer, like the big German beer. I can drink it. That guy was drinking like 20 beers when he was playing and active, and I was like, dude, like, what are you doing? Yeah. I've like, played with guys. We've all played with guys that oh, drink. Yeah. Lods, you're the. You were probably that guy drinking 20 Lutz beers drank before between a game. Periods. It's yes. A, it's a lubricant. <laughs> yes. I love it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good for the joints. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing these days, Eddie? A little bit of everything. Uh, I, I decided to walk away from a great job with the Mavericks. I yes. was very uh, grateful yes. with, with Mark and, and the whole staff because um, I was there for five years as a talent evaluator. And you know, honestly, like I was a little afraid to walk away from what I know. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, I, I kind of built this courage and you know, have kids, and I decided to take a one year off and not do anything and try to figure it out. And finally, uh, because of uh, the NBA was, was great to me, so I ended up making and saving money. So then I started doing my own investments uh, in the U.S. and in Mexico, and two of them 
they're doing really well, and one is actually a basketball team. Um, <laughs> of course it is. In the, um, in the Pro League in Mexico, have a great partner, and I spent a lot of time down there. Uh, I actually had Dwight Howard. He's interested in playing now in Mexico. He can make Play. more money overseas, but I'm Play. trying to play at 38. <laughs> Uh, uh, and I former to coach can, Why can't I coach in Mexico? You can come and coach. Nancy, you, you realize how many jobs well, you have? The I mean, Puerto you're Rican a League asked me to you're coach. You're a coach. You're a, a celebrity golf host. I mean, do you have time for all this, Nancy? I do. I do. Let me tell you about Eddie. Eddie is one of the most amazing human beings. How many years ago, seven years ago, he asked Del Harris and myself to come to Chihuahua, where he grew up. Yeah. He's legendary there, the respect that he has. We went to Chihuahua because I had of who of he is. <laughs> he had a Chihuahua. Yeah. Um, it was such a, we were there two or three days. Mm -hmm. uh, we were treated like royalty. And we did clinics, we had translators. Uh, I'm grateful, oh. is what I was going to say, so thank you. No, it's, it's been uh, an incredible journey. And uh, going back to your original question of what I'm doing, I do that still uh, yeah. in my hometown because to me, I think that as a role model, especially for uh, Mexican kids in my country and some in the U.S., uh, I think we have, we, have, um, we have to be there and we have to make sure that we share the knowledge. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to play for great coaches, great minds. So mm -hmm. I, I got I got to know basketball at the highest level. Then I got to be around um, icons like like Nancy and, and she also like was my mentor when I was coaching. So all these little things that I came and built up, I mean I'm trying to kind of share that throughout our country because basketball is a number two sport. Uh, in, in our country, soccer always is still number one, and it's up and coming. And that's the reason I got into the business of basketball with sure. the basketball league down in, in Mexico, and that's taking a lot of my time, but I'm having such a, an a incredible time, to the point that now they want to get me to involve in politics, and that's where I put the brakes. I was like, no, 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 no <laughs> politics for me. Yeah, that's where um, it starts, Eddie, and then for yeah. usually where it ends in politics. I think yeah, I'm, and I'm, so I think I'm a little smaller than yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, so to <laughs> that end, you know, as a Texan, I worry about Mexico, right? Is it because, you know, I think Texans kind of view sort of everybody that's coming across the border and stuff as if they are Mexican, which, you know, if you look at it at all, we know they're not. Is Mexico, am I okay to worry about it or is it, is it getting better? Are there, is there improvement there? Do I need to worry about that, that place as a country, Eddie? Well, the beauty of Mexico is, is, is our neighbor is the U.S. So I, I believe that the U.S. has a great influence in our country. Uh, no matter what what party is running the, the country or what they do or we do down there, uh, we still depend on the uh, U.S. economy. So we still have sort of the same uh, structure as the U.S. Uh, there is corruption, of course, uh, as any where in the in the world, but at the end of the day, I think that it's, it's gotten so much better. Uh, the, the, the new generations, up and coming politicians, they're younger, smarter. They got educated in the U.S. in in grade the Ivy League schools and all that. So they're going back and giving back uh, to the country, and I think that uh, eventually we'll be a, a better country for sure. You talk, you, you talk about basketball being the growth. It's always been a soccer country, right? Mexico has. With so when you were growing up as a kid, was it always soccer, and then basketball just happened? You know, with you know, so the growth over the last thirty years has it been more basketball than it has been soccer? Because you think about it globally, I mean, hockey's really never going to grow other than here and in Canada. It's not going to grow over Europe. Basketball for sure. Baseball, a little soccer, bit in Europe. Yeah, it's big yeah, in Europe. Yeah, Germany. in Europe, but not the way that basketball. Yeah. Baseball, it's is low cost, yeah. right? Basketball yeah, is Mexico. low cost, so it's yeah. easier. And, and we have more basketball courts in Mexico than than soccer than any other sport. Uh, and now, because of futsal and yeah. indoor soccer, they use they're being utilized for for that particular sport. But at the, at the same time, uh, we do have great infrastructure when it comes to like. Gems like okay. Mexico City has two uh, NBA top of arenas. Monterey has one. We have an arena that holds about 15,000 people. We also, I own a, a piece of that team as well in my hometown, and uh, we actually draw about 12,000 wow. uh, per so game. So it's, it's up and coming, and, and I think that uh, there's a great opportunity for business there um, yeah. as long as you know you get the right partners. And I do have. Uh, a couple of guys in there that are incredible um, 
They're, they don't depend on the government. They don't have any contracts with the government. They actually strictly business and they do it throughout the world. So worldwide Mexican guys. brands, yeah. Mexican guys yeah. that they supported my career and also supporting my my new uh, endeavors with with basketball in, in, in Mexico. But it's and amazing. we're doing it for yeah. because like, of the community. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're doing it for. Like we're investing money so we can uh, start co uh, utilizing basketball as a tool to make sure that we implement those values and fundamentals that that we need in our daily life. Yeah. I mean, you think about what the, you know, the NFL takes a game to Mexico City, right? Yep. Which is big. Every year. Every year, right? Now, I think the, NFL, well, the hell, yeah. heck, the NFL's going to Brazil this year. The yep. Eagles yep. opened in Brazil, yep. Yep. of all places. And, and seeing that, I mean, the, the growth has got to be over 200% from when you were a kid, right? It was what, really soccer. And then maybe basketball was just eh, something to do. And I mean, now the, it's, the last, I, I want to believe the last. Um, Ten years, basketball exploded. Okay. okay, but I think it's the NBA. The NBA has done an incredible job going global. And going back to my point with the NBA, the the, the franchise value they're at the top. So now they have to get creative. So how do you continue growing, sure. right? And Saudi Arabia, Arabia, as you were describing it, those probably the new yeah, people yeah. coming in paying like top dollars. But to me, it's like you tap into, you have Canada, so now you tap into Mexico with 130 million yeah. people living there. So let's say you capture 50 million, now your Amazon is still not going in Mexico. It's trying to penetrate the market, which, you know, Amazon, Apple, all these big corporations, they also tapped out in the U.S. They have all their clients. Yeah. We have, what, 230 million here in the U.S.? They probably cover like 200 million. So now they have to expand, and so does the NBA. And I yeah. think that that's where I've been. And I've been talking to uh, to the to the representatives. I had a conversation with the commissioner not so long ago. Like, how come we don't have a franchise in, in Mexico? I think it's just a matter of time. It has to happen. Exactly. So, you, that, which but is, along the lines of Menchie's first question, soccer, then basketball. Like, we're in Dirk's restaurant. Your former teammate. We're in Dirk's restaurant. Uh, Dirk was a tennis player, right? <laughs> And all of a sudden, he's seven feet tall. And he's like, maybe I should try this basketball thing. Have you right? ever seen him on a baseball field? That's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. 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 We've been yeah. playing heroes so, forever. So I wonder, Eddie, he were sucks. you? <laughs> yeah, so he said it. He said it. That's his former teammate. So, Even so, soccer, like, have you seen him like kick a ball? Yeah. I'm like, dude, yeah, like, what are you doing? Oh, really? Oh, no. Steve one sport Nash he'll play, he'll yeah. play in the bad yeah. knees, is what no, I'm saying. No, 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 because he can play tennis. He can play he's tennis. Good oh, yeah, tennis. He's very really good at tennis. I think he'd be better at pickleball now. He doesn't have to move very oh, far. He's got, well, he's got a wingspan. He wouldn't have to move, to move at all. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, but Eddie, did you start as a soccer player and then all of a sudden you got really tall? So, uh, I started as a soccer player. Everybody starts as a soccer player yes. in Mexico. And then my father was a pro baseball player. So, then I kind of tried to follow the footsteps. Then at 14, I went from being six feet to six eight. Uh, Fourteen. And, <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> six this is the beauty. Eight. This is the beauty of Mexico, right? So I, I went and try out in high school, my freshman year in high school, I went and try out for the baseball team. The coach looked at me from my feet all the way up, this little show guy, Mexican guy. <laughs> and then he had the nerve to say like I don't need you in baseball. Why don't you go try out for basketball? <laughs> so he gave me the best advice. He killed my dream, of course. Yeah, baseball. Because uh, yeah. he don't say that to I've a kid. I've seen you in the baseball right? field, yeah. Eddie. It's, not, it's, it's okay. Better than Dirk. It's yeah, I, oh, no, no. I, the, back then, I mean, I remember I was throwing uh, 84 miles per hour like when I was 13. At 13, so yeah, that's father, the thing. You could have been me. a big old Randy Johnson type. Well, he's yeah. letting it go in, in the catcher's mitt. Right. How stall he yeah. is. And, and I wish Mexico was like the U.S. I mean, the U.S., you have private uh, wealth investing in, in our communities, right? And it's a good business. Like you have so many, uh, so many uh, gyms, uh, multi sport gyms where you can go train and, and it's a good business. Mexico doesn't have that. No structure, so you have to depend on the U.S. Once you get to a level, like myself at 17, okay, now I can play basketball at a high level. I dominated Mexico, so I have to go to the best market, which it was the U.S., and I was lucky enough to, uh, to make that decision. Uh, but going back to your question, like soccer, baseball, and that guy wow. killed my dream in baseball, so yeah, I went to good. basketball and I started, and I obviously worked my ass off to get to where I am. It, it wasn't given to me, and I'm paying for it right now, and I'm sure Nancy can <laughs> agree with it. My, I had a hip replacement two years ago. I need to have these replacements in my bag wow. because I was not as talented as a big German. <laughs> So I had to like sacrifice my body for the most part, but play. I would love it. You I were love diving, it. you were setting screens, you were the guy who was energizing the team. And 
everybody, you know, in baseball, f football, so uh, you know, um, hockey, somebody has to do the dirty work. Yeah, so Ludge did that in hockey, right. blocking shots. Oh, I but think about it as entertaining. But yeah. as athletes, do, at, at 20 years old, think about it. Did you worry about how your body's going to feel when you were 45? Okay. No. I no, was made out of plastic or rubber. Exactly. I, I would yes. stretch and do all these things. It was it was incredible. Which is why, yeah, which is why have, we can't wake up in the morning without something hurting. I mean, I'm the youngest of this group, but I still feel 85. So my body does because of, like you said, we don't think about it. It, this generation. You talk. What'd you call them earlier? Lens? Alpha. Uh, the, yeah. the new generation. Yes. The alphas. The self-proclaimed. It works alpha. not there anymore. They watch and they're better automatically. They automatically get better as opposed to how we were raised. The doing part. What do you guys think about these new athletes, like gamers? Like oh, now they consider themselves. Don't even put that word like, athlete in there. No. It's like, no. I should have done that instead. <laughs> yeah, no, wouldn't your no, body no. be better, obviously? Yeah, you don't <laughs> have to deal with You'd have your original hip, wouldn't you? You don't Eddie. have to deal with carpal tunnel. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, listening to Eddie talk, how many times did you hear the word investment? Because you've done a lot of that, right? Is he the next Mr. Wonderful Maybe. from the Shark Tank? Yeah, Maybe. Mexican version of the Shark Tank. Not even close. <laughs> ah, Nancy could join the panel. I'm in. I'm in. See, there you go. I'm in. But you know. But it's just growing and growing and growing. Well, that's like volleyball too. Right now, we're having volleyball in 2025. Well, professional sport. Women's Volleyball Federation, which just started. Dallas is going to have a team next year. My oh, first really? year in the W, when I was coaching in GM in Detroit, the I would say the franchises were maybe worth five million dollars. They're being evaluated now at ninety million. Good. The WNBA, wow. WNBA, WNBA, yeah. ninety million, because of what's happened since COVID. It's yeah. it's amazing the opportunities. That's and so re remind me of uh, your paths. Yes. you and Eddie's paths, coaching paths, crossing. He was first of all, Eddie does not discriminate against anybody. We're right. minorities, yeah. and. When he got the coaching job with the Legends, and I was their, their first coach and yep. assistant GM, we knew each other, but he reached out, and we would watch film, and we would talk. And Did he follow you as coach? Was he the next think, coach after you? Was it Dell first for a little bit? It was Dell second, wasn't it? You were second, first, then Dell, Dell, then me. And then Legends then did a good job. Mm -hmm. They actually held their name, Legends. Yes, yeah. Not so me, so much me as a You're legend, a legend. But You're a legend. Dell had his... Uh, Nancy Lieberman, the best Good point. female They're both athlete. Hall of Famers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was actually pretty cool, and, and I really that's when I learned a bit of the business. Uh, so I got involved um, with the uh, Legends as, a, as, as the ownership group, and I started seeing like some potential there. Uh, in, in fact, when I had this conversation with Adam, I mean, I might be going to New York next week to meet with them because um, I wanted a G League team, and they you somebody else local guy that i know and then he was calling me to try to sell me the team and i was like wait a second why didn't they come to you yeah. yeah and uh so now now they're they're kind of flirting with me again uh but because i know and i learned from t the Texas ladies about coaching about running a team and also about ownership now i feel comfortable going into that business and i feel comfortable bringing some of my friends as investors to put some money into it because at the end of the day I think that uh, the G League is, is continuing to grow just like Nancy said. Um, the WNBA now is at 90 million. That's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And by the way, we do have uh, own two female. That's, that's a requirement for us. Men's, you have to have a female uh, team that I haven't even got to it. We have to operate 2025, so I do have time. Men's basketball, we have to operate like in the next three or four months. But I, eventually, I'm going to have to come back to you because I need players, I need coaches, I need the whole structure. If you want to take it, Nancy will coach it. We can She'll be business. the commissioner. Oh, yeah. well, She'll be the commissioner. So it, it's Breaking news. You talk about the growth. You talk about the vol professional women's professional volleyball, correct, Nancy? That's yes. coming. But I've had discussion with athletic directors in the North Texas area about most, a lot of girls when they get to high school, they go away from basketball and they go to volleyball. The only re reason they go away, I just had this conversation. Some women don't like the physicality, so I've heard they want to play. Aspect. No, uh, it's not the running. <laughs> it's the it's they. You know, in hockey, you get hit on every play. Mm -hmm. You're going to get hit. I think it's a new generation that he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, that's the alphas. You know, even yeah. in basketball, you know, it's going to be physical, but it's not going to be every single play. But the women, I haven't, I've had my basketball camps here for 44 years. 
we've had 300,000 kids come through camp. They don't want to get hit. And so when they don't want to get hit, they go to volleyball to hit, but not the physicality on them. But, oh, that's just, I mean, just think about that, how we were raised, though. That just goes, goes, we were just talking about the generational thing of how we were raised to fight through stuff. It's almost as if they don't want to fight through it. They want to take the easy path to, I don't know how big volleyball is in Mexico, if it's even if it's even thought of as far as, you know, soccer. I know baseball's big. Benji Gill's a good buddy of mine, yeah. right? Coaching Team Mexico to you know the Benji. semifinal. Yeah. yeah, so you know Benji. But baseball and then and then basketball. But is there anything else that, you know, like we said, the, the numbers just seem to go away, especially at the high school level. So, I'm, so at the college level, it seems like the numbers would be down too. No, numbers are all up because there's more girls playing sports. Yeah. Now you, you can, you know, kind of divide and conquer. But, you know, with NILs, with the oh. money they're getting, yeah. uh, with the money, like, in the, the NBA is getting better, the, the college coaches, female, making a million. As Don Staley, uh, Kim Mulkey just finished signing $35 million contracts. I'm the highest paid coach in the, in the big three. And, you know, I mean, it's nice when somebody who is ownership believes in you. I've been a GM uh, with, the, with the Legends, with uh, the uh, Detroit Shock in the W. So not only can you coach, but you can be a GM. Like Eddie, Eddie brought um, some sponsors from Mexico, some ownership money, I think maybe from China, right? You brought your buddies? Or that was Donnie. That was Donnie from China, yeah. But you were on the logo on the floor. So, yeah. you know, we're not just one trick ponies. I'm more yeah. like, we're entrepreneurial uh, Going right back to athletes. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. we're <laughs> athletes, and but we were doing it in our career. You know, we didn't know probably that we were connecting a lot of dots, but, you know. So, Nance, let's, because you were talking about women and taking that punishment, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked, you and I talked last night about Caitlin taken the five million, which we don't know if she's going to do. I don't even know if she's had the offer presented to her yet, personally. She has not. Okay, I didn't think she had. Anyway, uh, but you told me you're one of the, maybe the only person in the world who knows what it's like. I mean, look at the size difference between you and Eddie. And if you were in, you know, when you were playing, you played against men, and a guy Eddie's size set a screen on you. Yeah. What is that, what is that like? Look, in 1980, I had no pro league. I didn't have a pro league in my prime. In 80, um, I think Eddie knows this, but Dr. Buss and Jerry West called me. I was playing in a men's league in New York, and they did, Jane Pauley did a thing on me. Dr. Buss saw it. They called me the next day and they said, we want you to play for the Lakers in Summer League. Your coach is going to be a young coach. It's his first time. His name is Pat Riley. He did not want me on his team. I even have the video yeah. of this with Pat. And I didn't, in his mind's eye, look like the point guard that he would recognize. So I fly to LA. I'm out there. I'm getting my ass beat every practice. Um, he tells this story years later that, you know, he says to the, uh, the, the coaches, he goes, what the hell are we going to do with her? They beat the crap out of her. They knock her down. She doesn't cry. And she tried to start two fist fights in, in practice. In 80, you're 22 years old. I was 22 years yeah. old. And four days later, I was the starting point guard because I wasn't afraid. Yeah. And, you know, you go on. You can't be afraid. Well, well we've got... We just want to let you know what's going on. We've got a bunch of airport executives who are checking us out right now, which is awesome. It's great. W welcome. We, we love to see you. Thank you all for being here. And uh, we are helping to make people realize what an awesome concept a Dirk Nowitzki type restaurant is. There are lots of them throughout the country. And, and that's through our Playmakers brand. And Eddie, I want you to weigh in for us on, uh, you know, some of your best recollections of Dirk being your teammate. I mean, this guy was, he's iconic, he's unbelievable, he's so fun and friendly and down to earth. What do you remember? So I remember getting drafted by the Mavericks and I was, there was four rookies, Corny Alexander, Ethan Thomas, Donald Harvey, and I was a second rounder. They flew on Mark Cuban's plane to Dallas. Yeah. I flew Southwest. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> and I was like, you okay, had to take a donkey. This is how it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I got there and I was like, okay, whatever. But guess what? The number one guy that greeted me was Dirk. 
No kidding. Yeah. Dirk showed me the city around, and I had no guarantee contract. I was a second rounder, so I didn't know. Didn't know if I was. Well, I knew I was going to make the team. There was no questions there. There was no doubts in my and your mind. mind. Which is yeah. good. As an he athlete, didn't know that. Yeah. He didn't know that. Nobody else in the organization knew whether I was going to make the team or not because I had a non-guarantee contract, but he showed me around, took me around. Obviously, I kind of got to learn his personality. Being from Germany, is, they're different. Just like I'm different being from yes. Mexico. Yes. Uh, so his, his jokes were a little more, it was more, more of a dry sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, like we hit it off and we had something in common. We were foreigners in a big city. I was coming from Norman, Oklahoma. He was coming from Germany, a small town. Wurzburg, yeah. And we actually hit it off, and he started like showing me, taking me around dinners and this and that. And I was like, wow, this guy's being so nice to me. But anyways, long story short, now we fast forward to basketball. He would not, he would not let Sean Bradley guard him. He would not let anybody except me guard him. And again, no guaranteeing contract. And he would tell me, like, do not take it easy on me. And I was like, dude, I'm going to get you hurt. You don't understand. Like, I, I can go as hard as you want. But that was, that's when I knew that he was going to be special. Because everybody criticized him his first two years, the typical European player, finesse soft. game, soft. soft. Yeah. And, and, and they were right. I mean, he was young. He was 18 when he got to Dallas. When, when I got drafted, he was 20. And I was already 22. He's two years actually younger than me. Right. But during the playoffs, or the, when the game was on the line, the first three, four years, he couldn't dribble, he couldn't shoot, he would throw it away or he would do something. But the one thing that I can tell you is his resilience. He would get back into it, he would delete that play and get back into it and he was actually fearless. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has a quote that I really, really enjoyed that he said it. He said like uh, when it came to pressure, he actually um, he loves being in that situation. He actually says something else. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> you say whatever you want to hear. I make love to pressure. That's uh. the way you put it. And I was like, whoa, that's actually pretty cool, dude. Yeah. yeah. So then I got traded, and then I came back around, and he was like the toughest guy on the team. And I was like, what the hell? So then he was like, getting it during practice, uh, you know, the special situations, one plate, obviously the ball is going to Dirk. And he would tell me, like, all right, come on, let's see what you got. And the first time, the second time I came around, this guy put his shoulder on my chin. I think I had a concussion, didn't even know it. But I was like, what the hell, dude? Like, why do you have to be so aggressive? Now I'm, I was asking him to slow down. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he was so incredible. He was ready to be the MVP and obviously to win the championship with the following year they, they won it. Yeah. So you were you were there when they went to the finals in '86. I mean, in the '90s. Jeez, how old uh, do you think no, he is? Good 20, 20, no, 20, so beers. 20, 000, 000, six. beers I don't even. Know. <laughs> He's not a baby boomer. Yeah, twenty thousand six. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of one, one of the guys that keep drinking red. Two thousand six. Whatever. I was one of those guys that um, now because of my contract situation. Thank God I was blessed and I was making enough money. But I got traded for Eric Dampier. Oh, okay. To Golden State. So I went from the best organization to the worst at that time. Now, Golden State has grown. Yeah. yeah. It's the only place that I asked for a trade. Because they were not playing me, and they were paying me all this money. And we had a, a younger coach in Mike Montgomery. And I could tell he was a little tentative about Dale Davis. Like, Cliff Robinson was in the team. And so I was like the third guy. But anyways, I asked for a trade. So when I came back in 2010, um, Dirk was incredible. I mean, he played defense. He, I mean, the, the last, the, the finals against Miami, I think yeah. he broke his finger. Yeah. And he continued playing on shooting him. Yeah. So he continued playing. Now, when, I, when we went to the Western Finals, he actually uh, sprained his knee. And yes. I, I saw him practice. And, and I get it. Don Nelson Nelly was, was kind of play. protecting him. Wouldn't yeah. let him play. And I'm like, look at him. I was like, dude, like, we need him. I was, I, was, I was playing on one leg. I just had surgery that I was supposed to take a year off. Came back in seven weeks. And I'm like, you need to play. And that was my only shot to win the, uh, the championship. Oh, okay. And when he shot, they shot him down. He wanted to play. 
Now he said, and that no, was because game he was the future of the franchise, Spurs, right? Was that game seven yeah. against the Spurs? It was actually the uh, third game, game against the Spurs. Okay, okay. And he just never came back in the Western yeah. Finals, and all that. And then they always said we had the Nets. We had like the the easy way to San right. Antonio ended up winning the whole thing. Yeah. Crazy. But, but wow. think about what he just said about Nelly. Nelly saw a, had a vision of yep. the future. Yeah. And there's a lot of coaches, right? You know this, who they will grind you to, you know, in all of our sports, if they think you can help them win. Because a coach, Chuck Daly said this to me when I was coaching in Detroit. He goes, Nancy, my, I was a first time coach. He goes, go get the, uh, the yearbook, or you know, the little book that the media gets. He goes, go to Ron Harper. And I go to Ron Harper, and it says, Ron has been, you know, all pro, all this, all-star game. And he goes, this man has lost 70% of all the games he's ever played in, and it sounds like he's going to be a Hall of Famer. But he's lost. He goes, now go to my book. And it says, Chuck Daly is 359. You're only judged by your wins and losses as a coach. Yep. we got to get... Eddie out of here. That's so too bad. <laughs> Eddie's got to go kiss babies. That's yeah, what you do. Got, when you're, he's got stuff to do. I exactly. mean, Eddie's Eddie's here for a reason. It wasn't to Who's talk to us. Who's to say us. we can't set one of these up some down in, in Chihuahua, in yeah. Mexico, right? That's right. So, yeah. hey, love, maybe, you, maybe it won't be Eddie's, but it could be Lalo's. Lalo's. That's my nickname. <laughs> Yeah. The new restaurant here in DFW. Yes. There you go. Definitely in Chihuahua. Let's you make sure we go talk. One? Derek's the guy oh, to yeah. talk to. Let's get yeah. you a restaurant. Too. Well, thank you guys for Eddie. having me. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Always thank a pleasure. You. Awesome. I could hang with you guys. You could. Yeah, I had these teeth knocked out. You're a New Yorker. You're tough. I was trying to stab somebody when oh, I was, I was Make sure this is a recording. Dave's got you trying to stab somebody? Um, I was in a dress and patent leather shoes, and I this guy was making fun of me when I was 10. And my shoes slipped as wait, I try to stab them. Wait, stop put... a second. So you were in a mini skirt and high heels a ten. in when New you York. Were ten years old. He just old. changed that. I'm not a hooker. <laughs> She's from New York. What do you expect? I'm a looker. Yeah, but you were in a dress up to here. That's no, a I was in a. I was ten. Yeah, but you. She wasn't act. trying to sell her body for God's sake. I didn't bra at that time. I was ten. Don't say anything. Nancy. So I had a plastic, I was in New York, we were, and I had a plastic knife, but the guy was irritating me, and I got mad at him with my flaming red hair, and I went to try to stab him with my knife, and my shoe slipped on the, and my teeth hit, and I broke my teeth. I didn't kill him. And my mother oh. was so upset with me when oh, my, my dad brought me back home. The, the marble hit my teeth. No, your teeth hit the marble. Now, if you were an alpha in today's day and did that, on a subway They'd be in New suing York the City, floor company. You'd be getting the electric chair. <laughs> right. No doubt. No and then doubt. getting letting out. Yeah. It's plastic. Oh, yeah. Is letting yeah. a word? Letting. Look, Fury I showed letting up with a yeah. gun. Now I'm telling you that I tried to stab somebody. I, would, I so, thought you were going to say the guy punched you. Wait, though. Dave, what was Dave, the, your coach? Uh, Dave uh, Tippett. 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 Okay, when I got the job with the Legends, Dave calls me. He goes, come come to the Star Center in Frisco. He gets me on skates. And I was a little shaky on the skates, but I really want to learn how to go backwards. I don't know how. So he gave me the gloves and everything. And two minutes in, I throw my gloves up, and I'm pushing him and trying to fight him. Oh, well, Tip doesn't fight. I know, but he's like, do you want to fight or do you want to skate? I'm like, I'd well, rather, apparently I, you want to really rather fight. I, yeah. He's from New York. What I'd do you expect? Fight. Really fight first fight. and we'll yeah. talk later. You weren't wearing the same short dress at the time when you had I was, no, and like I... Like an ice girl. I didn't, I'm not an ice girl. <laughs> okay. But I'd love to drive the Zamboni. I'm sure we can get you one. You can drive around town. You could probably. Do you ever have you ever driven one once? Out of curiosity. Love to. Yes, you have. Once. One time. Yep. Were you drunk? Once. No, I was young. I was like 14 years old. Oh, so was Nancy. She was apparently 10. Dressing for the town. A, yeah, a, ten, a, ten. a training yeah. girl. Yeah. Yeah. Like a yeah. pretty, pretty woman. Why do you guys got? <laughs> Where's your car? All right, guys. My car's been totaled as of yesterday. All right. And he sold his bike. But I'm getting, but that's by design. He the sold car, the bike. Yeah, I we went to the shoot the day yeah. that we were done shooting. Somebody wanted went it. to the Harley shop. Yep, oh. sold it, and I said, well, here's what I want. We can do that. Mm. And then my car got totaled as of yesterday from the hailstorm. Hail yeah, but I'm gonna bring it back. I'm sorry. But you're gonna buy a new bike. You're gonna bring what back? Whatever I took. I, I apologize. Oh yeah, you but you're buying a new bike. Yeah, I think Nancy I, I, could ride a yeah. Harley. 
There's no question. Uh, you know what your bo what the boss said, uh, Neil? He says he's going to let me come out, take batting practice, and have a uni with my name on it. Because the last time when Buck was there and Dion and I went, D we walk in and Dion has a uniform that says Sanders. He has a hat, the belt, and all. And, and they're like, I'm like, well, we had a t-shirt for you. They gave you a Rangers t-shirt. And I'm yeah. like, oh. Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Yeah, yeah. That's, Buck. Hey, that's Buck for you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, but I, he let me use this parking spot underneath. Yeah, so he didn't have to give you a uniform. <laughs> give me well, a uniform. <laughs> let me get in a cage. But hang on now. Speaking of uniforms, I've you know what? I've seen the softball swing, Nancy. I've you seen know what? It's pretty good. With them today? What? He came in here with a Dirk Nowitzki jersey so that he could sign it for him. Did he? And then no, he's he going to put it up on his wall. But he ran off on it. So, you didn't get Dirk to sign it yet? No, he ran off. I'll yeah. get him later. We'll get him. We'll see him again. I'm going to get a Nancy Lieberman. I'm going to have her sign it, and you're going to wear it around town, Lud. That, that, I would be proud to wear that. No, you wouldn't. You, you would just we, stick it in your closet like the We one have a, a, a male and female game legend worn. on game that jersey. Worn. I wanted to get a game worn one, so it stinks, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, Lexus. my gosh. Yeah. This thing smelled oh, so she, stinking bad. Look, she's gonna wear, look, she she's probably has it in her purse. Do you have it in your purse, Nancy? No. No, she got a pick of it, though. But look at this. Caitlin's jersey she gave me after the game Monday, and I was so super happy. So I wore it during the game Monday. Yeah. It stunk. Right. It smelled. Well, she sweat, Nancy. She's but she her signed butt off. it to me and took it off of her back. Yeah, it's, but how many times have you done that? A, a lot. Hundreds, I bet. But that was cool of her, right? Very yeah. cool. No, very cool. Yeah. Now, so let me ask you this, and we got to get off. We got to be done. I got to go. But let me ask you this. Oh, are we doing a show here? Yeah, we're still doing oh, it. Oh, okay. So let me ask you this. Yes. Can they beat flipping LSU this year? It's a one against a three. Can they? Can they beat LSU? I want them to beat L. I love her. I want them to beat LSU. They're not as athletic as LSU is, and LSU's a better rebounding team. And Kim Mulkey's a good coach. She's I mean, love her or hate her. I think She's the physicality of LSU is going to what's going to separate them, right? Because they're going to isolate her. They're going to make the rest of the team. What do you do? In sports, as coaches and team, what do you do? You isolate their best yeah. player and get beat by the rest. Right. And that's what they're going to do. Well, last year she had 41 against them. Yeah. Oh, she did? Yeah, in the, in the championship she game, she had okay. 41. Okay. And they lost by 16 points. Wow. Okay, can we stop talking about sports for a second? Okay. Can, can we, can we hear, I want to hear how the can of corn in your cherry came out. Oh, wow. What can of corn. Your can of corn. Really? How it all, yes, I want to, can you give us a, oh, you're gonna cry. an abbreviated version? Okay, so, yes, I was you poor. You hand out a can of corn, right? For me to go to the Olympics? Yes. I can't believe you remember that. It's true. He's had a lot of concussions. I, was, I don't know how he remembers anything. He doesn't amazing. know his name, but he remembers yes. that. Yeah. I'm sorry, he calls it alcoholism. He called me Karen before. Um, <laughs> so, I'm 14 years old. I get to go to a tryout. I come home and I go, Mom, Mom, I'm going to the U.S. tryouts. And she goes, like, hell you are. I don't have money to put food on the table. I can't fly you to Albuquerque. This can of corn. They opened it, they cleaned it, and they put an envelope that said, we're endeavoring to raise $300 to send Nancy to the U.S. tryouts. This is 1974. Strangers put money in a can, and I had enough to go to the tryouts. Where were they, Nancy? Albuquerque, New okay. Mexico. And um, it was amazing. Like I was like a sophomore in high school, and this was Pat Summit and Lucy Harris. and These are Hall of Famers, Ann Myers. I was overwhelmed with, I had never seen so many great women play. And then the next year I make the Pan Am team. As a junior, we win the gold. Then my senior year, we win the silver. And I'm still in high school. I wish I knew where the people, I'm sure they're no longer with us, that were so generous to put money in a can that went door to door in Far Rockaway. So if that can happen to me, we can do stuff for other people. people. People did it on blind faith and kindness. I'm not here with you guys if strangers didn't help me. I had nothing. I had no food, no heat, no electricity, no father. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> you, hey, Lutz, you do have a Christmas tree though at the house. Oh, well, we got four of them. They're still, still up. Around. Still up. Yeah. Yeah. Still up. Yeah. 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 It's Easter. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but that's part of your staple for the charity event. And that's the only reason I do it because, like, I didn't wake up at 50 or make, like us, make good money and then 
say I have a, a conscience about helping people. I know what it's like to feel less. I know what it's like to to not have. Mm -hmm. It sucks to to have that in your life. We can take a perfectly wonderful child who maybe doesn't look like us and we can be dream givers, not hope stealers. I have so many Nancy Camp moments. Nancy, you can't do that. Nancy, you can't do that. Nancy, you can't be around, you know, Ludge. You can't be around, you know, Menchie or, or, or Radigan. You, you know, girls don't. Who are you to tell me what I can be? You should be encouraging me. And even if it doesn't happen, I mean, look at Billie Jean King. Look what she did for me. Well, what, what were you, 10 years old when you started playing at Rucker Park? 12 at Rucker. 12. You know Rucker. Yeah, Rucker Park. Rucker yeah, yeah. Park in New York. It is the place where every great player from New York goes and they play pickup, right? Most of them we've, we've heard of, right? All these kids that come through Rucker mm -hmm. Park make it to the NBA. Nancy's there as a 12-year-old, and somebody, thank goodness, they you know. They protected cause again, me. Obviously, it's a bunch of African-American kids who are who are really good at basketball, and somebody took her under their wing and said, let's go. Doesn't it sound like, Nancy, that, that, that little children's book? The engine that couldn't. Little engine that, that could. Isn't that you? It, it is. Dion talks about. Yeah. Dion That's talks you. about that. Everybody has a story. I'm, you know, I don't look at myself as a minority. I know I'm a woman in technically in this world, but my job is to, I'm I'm a risk taker. I'm a rule breaker. When I say rule breaker, you know, I'm not you know running and stealing, but. You can't tell me I can't coach men. You can't tell me I can't win a championship. You can't tell me I can't, Dirk and I, and, and think about this. In all the years we've been here together, in 2023, Dirk Nowitzki and me were inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame together. My Olympic team went in. I've already been in. She was in like 92. Yeah. Yeah. And we go in and we looked at each other and went, can you believe we're the class of 2023. Mm -hmm. You can never take that away. Baseball was my best sport. Bobby Mercer was my hero. My hero in baseball. Hockey was my favorite best sport growing up. We used to play roller hockey. I was Eddie Jockerman. Remember Eddie? No face mask. I mean, we had, like I said, the gag line and Walter Kachuk and all these guys. My mother's like, what is wrong with you? My mother took me to a psychologist when I was 11 years old because I used to sleep with the transistor listening to Marv Albert call the hockey games. And, you know, Jockman is between the pipes and only God saved more than Bernie Perrant, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I'm you. Except Alder. Well, you're the sports. We think you're about think sport. about what we as athletes, our generation, right? Luds, Luds didn't even know he was going to college, and they told him he was. I mean, right? You tell us you can't right. do it. They right. tell us, you know, you're too small. You know, you're not going to do this. But that just it speaks volumes to what we were taught, told as kids that you're not. Yeah, you can't play. Those are boys. You can't do it, Luds. You can't do it. This is just. You know, I can't do it because of this. But look at what it's done. I think that's what's missing from this generation now, of of. Of people telling them they can't do it, okay, then they'll just go well, you do know something why? else. They because don't everybody play. tells them they can now. Yeah, right? oh yeah. Especially their parents. Well, that's why everybody, right? here's your trophy, you yeah. participate, yeah. you can play. Everybody Which is bullshit, the can. whole participation yeah. thing is BS. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a winner and a loser. Like, I once asked Kobe and uh, LeBron, I said, are you okay, like, how much money do you make? Right. And they're like, what? You know, like 90 million. I said, Are you okay divvying up your contract with the team 1 14th or yeah. 1 15th? And they're like, No. Fuck no. Yeah. Uh, like Kobe said, there's a reason why I don't trust you and I won't give you the ball in crucial situations because when I'm going out to work out at four in the morning, you're coming in at four in the morning. I don't trust you. You're the last one to practice that was and you. the first coming one to in. leave. Coming in. Yeah. Coming in. But he was out drinking until that point, but yeah. you were there. No, it's coming in. Yeah. But to make it to where you are in your career and, and you know, Minchie, where you are in your career and Rads, I mean how many how many awards do you have? How many you got a, a, yeah. a, a house. Well, we've all been told that you can't do it. Right. You're not yeah. gonna be able to yeah. do it. Yeah. But we're here and we all have a, a background, a different story. But we're all grateful and we're mean as shit. And we competed like the devil. 
And it's okay to want to win. It's so I today. Why did I play at 50? Why did I play at 39? I wanted to see if I could do it. I wanted my kid to know what his mommy did. Yeah. I didn't have my prime. Yeah, by the time you played at 50, you weren't his mommy anymore. You were like, Ma. Right, no, Ma. Right. And he's like, Ma. Yeah, hey, Ma. Let's get in the sake. game. Yeah, yeah. the I'm competitive like, you buy me some beer? Is, we were yeah. born with a competitive gene. Fit. We, yeah. I think we all were, though, right? We had people that we looked up to. Some more so than others. Yeah. And we're still yeah. competitive, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the problem, I think, just this year. How do you motivate this generation? All I had to do as a kid was say, I'm going to be better than you, you, and you. What do I need to do? Now it's just... I'm going to be ready. Okay, I watched it. I'm better than you. I'm yeah. going. Yeah. Right? You know what I we know build? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In my head. Yeah. You know why we build dream courts? We're trying to get these kids out of the house. You know, yeah. we play roller hockey. We play volleyball. We play tennis. And now we play golf on dream courts. We put nets and the little strip and let... We get kids who have been told, oh, you're black. You don't right. get to play. You play basketball and football. Yep. No, you don't. You do not get to tell me what I can be. Let's not turn them into one sport athletes. It, Give it, them it's a not chance fair. to know who they are. Try everything. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's why we do right. what we do Dave's, with the charity. Dave's got to go. We got to, yeah, yeah we got to look at Dave. Dave's like, Dave I got another gig here. Overtime pay. Yeah. We, what? We, yeah. Well, yeah, he knows better. <laughs> yeah, we, Lori, Lori's yeah. calling you going, yeah. dude, yeah. Yeah. dinner. We so appreciate you. I hope you watch every minute of this. It's awesome with Nancy. She's a Hall of Famer. We had Eddie on. We all got When's it. the golf tournament? The uh, September 16th. September 16th. Castle Hill. This is September 16th. Nancy yeah. Lieberman yes. Charities. Great charities. Great. Thank you. Just what she's and doing. And she's got the galas. The yes. gala. And the gala. The gala is the 14th. I think Saturday. we should try to get Dirk to bring some of this. Uh, she already I'm talked gonna, to him. I'm Lower Town beer out there. Talk okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm it gonna, was all worth it today. We'll get the big German out there. Yep. Okay. Note to self. Who's your big star this year? Do you have a big, huge star? Okay. Let me tell you. Our friend, we wanted to honor Dirk. His event is the same day. Oh, no he kidding. and I talked. He felt horrible. Text me, Nancy, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, stop. I'm going to see if we'll work our date in 2025. To get him. We're going to honor him. I'm praying and hoping that either Jason Kidd or Shaq says yes. I'm talking to them. This year? Yes. So if Shaq you be, I mean, just throw your prayers out there that they will do it. Shaq who? You don't and, like we'll, Shaq. and we'll always have the same group Shaq. of guys that are always there. Your buddy Jay Harris. Yeah, he's the best. Jay's the MC. He's yes, the, Jay's always there. What a guy. Yep. We love that man. She went to college. Well, yeah. well didn't go together. I'm but. older, but you, he, he, you guys he know Dave dominion. stopped recording five minutes. Yeah, ago. Oh, we, we gotta let Dave go. Thank <laughs> you. Who cares, Dave? It's been awesome. We'll see you next time.